Our next, uh, our next speaker is uh, Sebastian James, who's Group Chief Executive of Dixon's Retail, which is one of Europe's um, leading retailers of consumer electronics, personal computers, domestic appliances, and so on. Dixon's trade through over uh, 1,200 stores uh, and as well as online. Sebastian became Group CEO in February and has wide retail experience, including um, developing the turnaround strategy at Mothercare in 2003. Sebastian's going to talk about Dixon's uh, clicks and mortar approach to multi-channel retail in an Amazon world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sebastian James. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Michael, at the beginning of this uh, presentation, said that he'd invited the uh, best and brightest of the internet world to speak. I'm very honored that he also invited me. Um, uh, I'd like to just spend a few minutes talking about Amazon and how shopkeepers can flourish in a world uh, in which Amazon also exists. Because um, in just 10 minutes, I want to talk a little bit about how um, having stores, being a multi-channel retailer, I think gives you some structural advantages uh, relative to single-channel internet. Um, so I was going to start by just showing um, a slide that I've shown to all of my teams, explaining what the impact of Amazon has been in our world and what the impact of single channel retail has been in our shopping. Forgive me if I'm a bit hoarse. I was at the Velodrome on Tuesday and I was just shouting my head off, so I'm so apologies for that. The critical thing, I think, is that there are four um, facts about this new, new world. And the first is that um, I think for many, many years, many retailers, including us, hoped that single channel internet would just go away. And uh, we were disappointed. Uh, single channel internet stuck around. Single channel internet does fantastic things for customers. Uh, as Nick talked about, uh, it allows, um, allows people all over the world to have access to things that are simply not possible elsewhere. It has a role forever. And we have to accept that, and we therefore have to start changing our mentality and saying, well, how do we live alongside single channel internet retailers and flourish uh, while uh, living with them? The second absolute truth is no matter what I do, um, it will always be cheaper to have one warehouse, uh, a website, and to ship goods uh, in an envelope uh, than it will be to have stores, uh, to pay rents, to have car parking, to have staff, to have HR departments, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all of which are uh, expensive. Um, now, I have a slight gripe, which is that in my sector, uh, it is not uncommon, and particularly in the US, it's become more and more common for customers to go to uh, stores uh, to enjoy all the benefits of those services and then to go home and order from a single channel retailer for less. And so I've just put on here a tiny bit parasitic, and that's the world we live in, and we have to accept uh, that uh, single channel internet retailers are not afraid of taking advantage of my stores uh, to help them sell their products. And we just have to recognize it and see what we're going to do about it. The third thing is that we, um, as legacy retailers, we have a lot of shops. Shops are very hard to get in and out of. Uh, we have very creaky old systems that were put in in the early days of, uh, of uh, IT. Um, and we have IT departments to match. We have, uh, and, and when we compare ourselves to the nimbleness and the, the, the speed of change and execution of the new companies that have risen up in the last decade, uh, we have some uh, very profound disadvantages that we need to overcome and we need to change. The critical point about that, though, is that customers don't really know where internet retailers live. Where they know where I live, I live on the local park, and you can find me there very easily. And then finally, I think the critical thing, and this is, I think, more of a surprise to, um, to uh, many of my colleagues than you would expect, is that uh, what's happening is that single-channel internet retailers are not really taking, uh, eating our lunch particularly. Um, does anyone want to guess what Amazon's electrical retail market share is? Anyone want to guess? Uh, it's, it's um, well, when, my, the average response I get is between 15 and 20%. The, the Amazon in the UK is 4.8% market share. So it's much, much smaller. Uh, it's growing, but it's much, much smaller as a total than you would expect. But what it has done is created very real price transparency for the customer. So what it's doing is not so much eating our lunch as making that lunch less tasty, because we're having to sell products at prices which are much, much more competitive and find ways of doing that. So the risk is that if we are less nimble, faced with new predators, um, uh, with, our, with, our, you know, with the, the food supply being, uh, being harder to come by and less, and less attractive, uh, we remain flightless and good to eat. The big risk is that we become uh, a dodo. We become extinct, and it happens fairly swiftly, and we now need to take the battle to the competition, and we need to do that in a number of very simple ways. We have to recognize the one critical strength that a multi-channel retailer has 
over a single channel retailer, and that is this. In our sector, 82% of customers spend some of the time in buying a television, a computer, uh, a big domestic appliance, spend some of the time online, 82%, an enormous number. But also true is that 94% of people spend some of the time in store. And that shouldn't surprise us. We're, we're, we're talking about pieces of kit that typically uh, cost an average UK monthly salary. Uh, they're large pieces of furniture. A television is something you live with for three or four years that you look at every day. And not surprisingly, most people would like to see it, would like to have a conversation about it. And that is our opportunity to leverage a number of revenue streams which are not available to single channel retailers. So for me, the heart of this is that everything is in the conversation. And the first, uh, I, the first thing I want to talk about in just a moment is that customers want more than a box. And uh, we'll talk about the second. Secondly, buying the wrong product is the single most expensive thing you can do. So it's better to buy the right product for 10% more than the wrong product, uh, even if it's 20% cheaper. Thirdly, we believe that forever, if you are really good, then customers will reward you a little. And then finally, uh, you have to make sure that you are smart enough to make your business extremely efficient and, and easy to run if you want to compete with single channel internet. Customers want more than a box. Oh, by the way, this, um, this chap here was in the, uh, I'll just go back a slide. Huh? This chap here was, uh, is in our Brick Mo, he's in our Brixton store, and uh, he, was, um, he was in the riots. And I went to see all the stores just after the riots last year, and I discovered, slightly to my surprise, that there were trainers all over the floor. And what had been happening is that people had been robbing the JJB Sports shop next door. They'd had armfuls of trainers. They came into our shop, shop and went, fantastic, laptops, and dropped all the trainers on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so um, customers want more than a box. Uh, a, a box, a computer on its own, is a very boring object. Uh, it doesn't do very much. Um, it, uh, you can turn the light on. That's pretty much all that happens. It takes three or four hours uh, for a person to set up a laptop at home. Um, it can be a very tiresome experience, and people often get it wrong. And we, we quite often get. Um, uh, we quite often get people coming back, particularly wives coming back whose husbands were, were more ambitious than perhaps they ought to have been in installing their washing machines. And they've come back and said, for God's sakes, can you help me out because my kitchen floor is soaking wet, etc., etc." This is very, very standard, which is that the right experience for the customer is to buy the box, the installation, uh, the peace of mind, uh, all the, the bits of equipment that work with it. So for instance, a television, uh, if you buy it today, a, a slim television, you also need to buy a home theater kit, you need to buy the one that works with it in order to get a properly good cinematic experience. And we're, we're finding more and more that customers who do that come out much more satisfied. We are 10 times more effective than Amazon at selling the ecosystem that goes with a piece of equipment. Uh, and therefore, we are able to leverage this effectively, this revenue stream that is not available to single channel internet, but at the same time to make customers happier. And I think that's a fantastic combination. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, buying the wrong product is expensive. And it's expensive for everybody. I, I grew up on a farm and uh, I used to cut lettuce in the summer and uh, we would, there would be lettuce cutters and we would walk up and down the rows of lettuce looking a bit sad and trying to pick out the product that was right for us and uh, the lettuce that was right. And, uh, and actually, my customers buying a television, it looks very similar a lot of the time. Uh, you see people walking up and down the rows of televisions looking a bit sad. And our job is to make sure that we ask them the questions necessary to curate the range that we have, 150 TVs or whatever it is, to curate that range down to the five or six that are right for them. And then we need to say, and we've tested all of these, and we think this is the one for you. And if we can do that, we are also able to guide customers typically into better products. We found that overwhelmingly, uh, in fact with laptops, two-thirds of customers come back to us uh, that we've researched have said they wish they had spent more on their laptop because actually when they got it home, they wanted more functionality. And that's because nobody had the conversation with them that said, this is what you should be buying because this is what you want to do with the product. Because we can do this, we can have a very different conversation with our suppliers because suppliers are desperate to sell their new technology. The new technology is what they've invested in, it's where they still make some margin, it's where the system economics are better. And we are incredibly better at doing this than Amazon. And that's meant that, uh, that's meant that over the last two or three years in particular, suppliers increasingly have begun to recognize and reward us uh, for the job of selling customers the products that they really need, which incidentally tend to be the products with the best technologies and the newest technologies. And that makes a huge difference and is another revenue stream not available to single channel internet. 
The third thing is that we think ultimately um, customers will always reward good service and good stores and good experiences and the fact that you are there and they know where you are if they need to shout at you with just a tiny premium. Now, three years ago, the difference in price between us and, uh, and single channel internet was 22%. Last week, it was 7.5%. And the reason that our margins haven't collapsed in that time is because we've been able to leverage these other two things. Now, I think in the long run, it's going to be about three or four percent. And I think that that means that it's 15 quid on a 500 quid telly. So if you imagine a young couple gets up in the morning, comes to our store to buy a TV, we talk them through their needs, we guide them to the five or six televisions that suit their needs, we say, this is the one you should buy. I have one in stock, my colleague Steve will put it in the car, and by the way, my name is Seb, and if something goes wrong, please do give me a call for that we think the customer will always give you about 15 quid. And frankly, I'm happy to tell the customer what the price is in single channel internet. I'm happy to tell them because I think we're offering excellent value for money and I think customers recognize that. But you've got to be good. If you're not good, you don't have the trust. If you don't have the trust, there's nothing they're paying for. So they have to pay you because they trust that you will look after them if something goes wrong. And finally, we need to be cost effective. In, in, in Dixon's, we've taken out 169 million pounds of annual cost uh, in the UK alone. And we've done that while doubling our customer satisfaction scores. And the way we've done that is by doing some very, very simple things. So for instance, um, uh, for instance, in our stores, I did a piece of analysis to understand uh, when our customers were in. Not surprisingly, they're mostly in on Saturday. And then I did the same analysis to understand when our colleagues were in. And surprisingly, they were mostly in on Wednesday. And that felt like a mismatch and, and therefore was something that we could relatively straightforwardly sort out. And that is the sort of work that I love doing because we were able to improve the satisfaction for the customers on Saturday, improve uh, the cost position, but also because colleagues hate wandering around empty stores, improve the satisfaction of our colleagues. And that's a fantastic triple win. And we, we, we had hundreds and hundreds of examples in Dixon's where we were able to do that. So I think that those four things together allow us, when you add up what those are worth in the electrical sector, those four things together allow us to be structurally more profitable in selling electricals because we give a better service to our customers than uh, single channel internet and Amazon in particular. So what's exciting for me is that I think that multi-channel can flourish, genuinely flourish in an Amazon world. I guess, you know, just to sum up, uh, I, 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 this is something, again, I talk to our colleagues. Uh, the great good fortune for me for working in this sector is that our shops can genuinely make people happy. And we have historically performed a magic trick, which is to take customers who are excited about buying a new piece of kit, and they come into our stores and we make them anxious and miserable. And I think we have to really work hard uh, to, we have to really work hard, and we have been working hard, on genuinely changing people's perceptions so they come to our stores and leave happy and excited about the products that they've bought. And to me, the key, key, key point is that it's all in the conversation. This conversation is our unique asset relative to single channel internet. I no longer think our stores now are incentivized on all of our sales in their catchment, no matter whether it's online or offline. We can order in store uh, for delivery to home. We can order at home for delivery to store. Uh, we no longer think about the world in online and offline. Just the very simple question, did the customer buy from us or did they buy from somebody else? And once you start thinking in that way, then actually, the notion of your conversation being part of the journey, your online experience being part of that journey, is the critical thing. And this idea of you have a branch in your customer's home, you have to regard that as another way of speaking to the customer, of enticing them to your store, of having that conversation. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.